Hello and welcome back to the shed. In today's episode, we're going to be restoring this old vintage Diston handsaw. Hope you enjoy. So the first step in this process is to remove the handle and then we will get on to removing the rust on the uh, saw plate. Remember with everything, always try to get a screwdriver that fits your screws best so you don't burn them out. So now that we've got the handle off the saw plate, we need to go, go ahead and remove the rust off this plate. We will also need to de-rust our brass nuts and the medallion here. So you want to keep them in a nice safe spot and I'm going to go ahead and clean the plate first. So to remove the rust off this, I'm going to go ahead and use some 120 grit sandpaper, followed up by a little bit of 240 grit sandpaper and I'm going to be using a little bit of denatured alcohol just to lubricate it and help remove the rust. I like to keep a little bit of paper towel on hand just to continually clean it back just so you can keep track of uh, how you're going with the rust removal. Now this process is not a quick process. Take your time, enjoy the process and uh, you can go much lighter if you need to if there's an etching on here that you want to maintain or something. Go ahead and use some steel wool or um, some very fine wet and dry sandpaper if you could see that there's an etching in here. But in this case, I don't see one at this stage, so I'm just gonna go ahead with this 120 grit until I've removed it all. So as you can see here, we're starting to remove it. We're starting to see a bit of bare metal through here, but we've gotta just keep going until we can see it right through. Some of these darker marks you can see here are pitting marks and we'll never remove those. Uh, you could, but you're going to remove too much metal that it's not worth it. The other thing is some of these other darker marks that you'll hear some people say is actually patina. Yes, in, a, in some way it is a patina, but a lot of these darker marks that you see here are actually heavily ingrained rust. And yes, that brown or black colour from the rust does help to preserve the metal and you could leave it or you could remove it. It just depends on the level of restoration you want to go to. Right, you can see here, there's still some brown around the edges here. We definitely want to remove all of that. So as you can see along here, I'm sort of coming right up to the edge here and just avoiding the teeth. When I come in with the 240 grit, I will actually just rub the edge of these teeth a little bit and that will take most of it off. But in the use of the saw, I find that that rust doesn't really affect it. It doesn't affect the cutting edge 
And I find once you start putting it through the timber, it tends to take that rust off and it's not a problem anyway. But it's up to you. You can rub it back, but I would suggest not doing it with the really coarse sandpapers. Been right across this and remove the rust over pretty much all of it now. So I'm just gonna come back and give it a wipe back just to make sure I haven't missed any. And we can see that that rust dust is all gone now. So now what I'll do is I turn it over, do complete this side first. Once I've done that, I'll come back on with a 240. We will also clean up these edges of the plate and then we'll move on to looking at the handle. It's time to grab the 240 grit sandpaper, continue with the same process. If there's not so much dust flying around, you don't necessarily have to use methylated spirits or denatured alcohol at this stage. You can if you want. Um, I like to do it sometimes. On this one, I don't think I will. Um, there's not really much rust left but the fine sandpaper will actually continue to refine this and smooth the surface out and remove uh, the smaller bits of rust in between where the heavier sandpaper goes. With this sandpaper, as you can see, I'm coming much closer up to the teeth and I'm actually going right over the teeth here. It's not gonna affect the sawtooth that much. But on the whole, normally I find there's a little bit of rust left along the edge of these saw teeth here and it doesn't really matter. Of course, as always, there's more than one way to remove the rust off these old tools. Sandpaper I like because it's a very quick uh, process to go there and you get you know, gratification pretty quickly and you can have an entire handsaw de-rusted and, and ready to use practically inside a couple of hours. Now, obviously for me, it's gonna take a bit longer than that because I'm filming, but for you guys, it should be a relatively straightforward process. Now, obviously, if you've got a lot of deep pitting, you're not gonna be able to restore a saw like that as well as one that has minimal pitting, such as the one I have here. Now, it always pays when you're buying secondhand tools is to look out for these signs of pitting and stuff, darker colors, um, different shaping on the metal. So I just think that you need to have a better look at photos and ask for more photos if you're buying them online or from auctions. And in person, have a very good inspection of the actual tool. Try to make sure you get a saw plate that's straight. Try to get a saw plate that has all its teeth and none of them are broken off. Although we can reprofile teeth and we can re-add them, it's just a lot more work. So I find that if you spend a little bit of extra time in obtaining the tool, you're gonna to have a much faster and easier result at the other end when you come to restore it and use it. Always going in the grain of the metal. Yes, metal does have a grain and it's usually in the longitudinal grain of it, so it's normally in the length of it. So if we have a look at this, this is smoothed out much better than they are than before. And if you look closely, there's more metal showing through, but it is keeping the darker marks, which is your patina and not necessarily rust in this case. And it's also shined it up to a degree. If we look at this side, it's not quite as shiny, it's duller. So now that I've gone ahead and used the 240 grit on this side of the plate here, I'm gonna go ahead and do the other one. We can see here that this is all done and ready to go as well. I wanna just finish this plate off before I move on to doing the screws and the nuts and fixing up and restoring the handle. So what I'm gonna do is use some Tormac paste as you've seen me use before. I'm gonna use some four knot steel wool here and I'm just going to put a little bit of that Tormac paste on my steel wool like this and just in circles give the plate a little bit of a rub over and that removes any of the rust that's been left behind and it also just helps to polish it up and protect the plate from further rusting. Now that I've done that, just come back with a bit of paper towel and just buff it out. And once we've done this, our saw plate it's done, it's restored, it's good to go. We can give it a paste wax afterwards 
and all that needs to be done is for it to be sharpened, which I'll do in the next video. The next step, or the next thing I'm going to move on to, is cleaning up this handle. Now, it still appears to have a bit of a finish on it. It's probably a shellac finish, or it could be just to build up a grime over the years. This handle has been cared for by its previous user. It's got a few of these little uh, leaf carvings put onto it, and quite a bit of care, quite decorative in the handle. So I would have said that this was a craftsman that actually really cared about this tool. So what I'm going to do is use a little bit of steel wool and some denatured alcohol first to clean it up. And we give this all a good clean back. Now you can see how this steel wool tends to disintegrate a little bit on the surface, so you could use something like a very fine scotch bright pad as well. Now, this handle feels sticky to me now, so that indicates to me that the steel wool's started to break down uh, either an overspray of some finish on it, or it was indeed finished with shellac initially, and it's actually started to break that shellac down. Now, however far you want to go with this does depend on whether you want to take it right back and clean it right back and put a, a, new, a completely new surface on it or not. Now that, that's really up to you. If you want to keep some of the character of it, a little bit of the dirt staying here and whatnot is not going to affect the function of the saw, but you really just want to make sure it's clean because you can see uh, just here there's a lot of built up something that's all, all split and cracked on the surface. You want to make sure you get that off. I would just recommend that you try to go with as little aggressiveness on it as you can to start with. Try to see what you're working with and only go aggressive with it as a last resort. Or if that's the look you're going for. Now, I mean, there's nothing wrong if that's the look you're going for. You want to cut it back and then put a, a coloured shellac on it or a coloured oil or you just want that natural oil straight on the surface. Go ahead, do it. There's nothing wrong with that. It's up to you and it's your personal preference. My personal preference is to maintain as much of the, the history and the, the past uses of the tool as possible, if possible. But I do like my tools to be clean and so I can actually put a new coat of either paste wax or uh, shellac or just oil straight onto it. See, there's a little bit of a run of paint just along the edge here where the blade was. So I'm wondering, perhaps, the blade was painted at some point on this and it's gone onto the handle, or this handle was off a saw that someone decorated and painted, which seems to be a thing that people like to do. Just here, I'm just gonna go with a little bit of this scour pad. Just an abrasive pad, synthetic abrasive pad that's a lot more aggressive than the steel wool, because there's a lot of built up grime on this and I really wanna just cut through it. So what you can see here is there's still quite a bit of dirt, especially in uh, the relief carving stuff that's here. Um, up around here, there's quite a bit of dirt still on it, but I want to keep that on this saw. I just want to keep it as the um, as a bit of a, a wood patina, if you will, and to just show some of the history of the tool and uh, just show that it's not a, uh, a new tool. It's an old tool that's got a lot of history behind it. So now that's done, I'm going to, in this case, I'm just gonna finish this handle with a little bit of linseed oil. And then once that's dried, I'll follow up with a bit of paste wax. I've just got this container here that's got raw linseed oil in it. So I'm just gonna dunk both ends in let the excess run off. We just let that run off. And then I'm just going to use my fingers. You can use gloves if you want or a rag. It doesn't really matter. Uh, obviously if you're using uh, store-bought boiled linseed oil because of the chemical dryers, I very much recommend that you use gloves because those chemical dryers are not going to be good for your skin. 
So now what you do is we just let this sit here, let it soak up what it wants. If there's any areas that look like they're dry, we'll add a little bit more linseed oil to those areas, let it soak up. But since this has been finished prior and it looks like the wood was sealed with um, some old shellac, uh, this wood shouldn't be too thirsty and shouldn't want to take up too much oil. It's been about 10 minutes of this sitting here and as you can see there's still quite a bit of the oil actually just sitting on the surface. This, this handle's not really absorbed much. So what we want to do is use some paper towel and wipe all this excess off. Any of this excess, if it stays on here, um, as it dries and polymerizes, as polymerizing oils like linseed oil does, it'll leave like a thick skin, which will be really just horrible. So we just want to wipe all this excess off. Be very thorough and be careful with your rags. Linse linseed oil can uh, spontaneously combust. So you want to lie your paper towel out flat somewhere for it to dry before you throw it in a bin. So while we set this aside and let that dry, I'm going to bring the screws, medallions and the nuts across and we'll give them a clean up while we wait for this to dry. As you can see, they look like they're brass because they've got like this greeny blue sort of uh, copper corrosion on them. So what we're going to do is get all this discoloration off them. Now, if you soaked your uh, saw plate in vinegar, you could go ahead and throw these in the vinegar and then all they would have needed was a, a quick rub back. And that is actually probably the quickest and easiest way to actually clean these up. So the options are, you could use a quite aggressive pad like I've got here. Uh, you could use some less aggressive Scotch-Brite pads. You could use some steel wool. A wire wheel, or if you're doing it by hand, you can also use a strop to, to clean them up. Now, if anyone saw my restoration of the number five Stanley hand plane, I'm going to use the exact same process that I use there, which is going to be partially steel wool, partially the strop, and I'm also going to add this quite aggressive scarab pad just to remove that gunk off the outside. So you can see how this came up now. Yeah, there's a little bit around the lettering here that I couldn't remove, but that doesn't really matter. So we're just gonna leave that and we'll move on to the rest. So now we're finished cleaning up the, the screws for the handle. The handle's been drying. What I'm gonna do before I paste wax the handle is we're gonna put the, the saw back together and then we'll paste wax the handle and the plate all at once. in. Go ahead and put all the other screws in first. Turn it over and then we'll screw them back in. And you just got to sit here and rock it for it to fit. And then if it still doesn't fit, hang it off something and just give it a little tap and just seat it. over, get each one of these screws started like this, so these ones are done up as tight as they can go, so I'm just going to try and clock them so they all face the same direction. So now we've got that done up, we're going to go ahead, we'll put the paste wax on, let that dry, then come back and wipe it off. So this saw has been raining around 10 minutes now, so we come back, wipe it back.
Now we're just gonna, on the handle, just use the horseshoe brush. We'll just give it a quick polish. So there you have it folks, that's how you de-rust and clean up and reassemble a handsaw. In the next video we're going to be sharpening the saw. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like what you saw in this video and would like to support me and allow me to continue making these great videos for you, please consider liking and subscribing and checking out my Facebook and Instagram pages. I also encourage you if you have any questions related to the content in any of my videos, please leave it in the comments below and I'll try to get back to you. Thank you.